Good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to uh, a delayed select board meeting, as originally scheduled for 7 p.m. We now have a full quorum. It's uh, 7.25, and I declare this meeting now open. Like the gavel action. <laughs> uh, first order of business is uh, salute the flag and pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Second order of business is to shout out to our cable guys in that we're not fully uh, capable of telecasting uh, uh, studios is cl closed. And Jesse and Tim uh, did a great job in setting this up to do this meeting remotely. In addition, uh, Tim has put up a, uh, a Facebook page uh, so that you can uh, connect through that page to town meetings, uh, school board meetings, et cetera, et cetera. Thank you, gentlemen. The, uh, with us tonight, uh, we have uh, Mr. Joseph uh, Zona, uh, Senior Principal of Simpson, Gumperts, and Heger, uh, a national engineering firm who's going to uh, discuss with us uh, his background and uh, discuss uh, issues with the uh, ongoing issues with the town hall. Welcome, Joe. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. My pleasure. Uh, Joe, we met with Joe a little this afternoon and we, we looked at the, uh, the town hall a little. And uh, I'd like to, uh, for Joe to share his opinions of what he uh, viewed uh, in, in looking at in, in the structure today or how we might proceed going forward. Certainly. Um, I'll preface it by saying um, we had a limited amount of time and we were looking at what we could see without removing materials or going up into the attic, which um, we didn't really have access to today. So I haven't really completed an engineering study, but based on um, what's visible from um, in the top floor of the building and from the exterior, it's clear there's been very significant outward movement of uh, the north and south walls uh, at the location where the main truss supporting the roof of that portion of the building um, was originally supported. And um, that's undermined the support of uh, that major truss at both bearing points. Uh, I see emergency shoring was installed. I understand that was done in 2015. And that has, I believe, stabilized the truss in terms of supporting its weight. Um, but you also told me that there have been some observations that there may be new cracks or cracks that have become wider since that shoring was installed. So the forces that, that caused the walls to move outward may still be in effect. And of course, we haven't done our study to complete that, but we have some theories already of what might be driving it. Um, I open the board, uh, open questions of the board, entertain questions from the board for Mr. Zona uh, as to uh, how we might proceed. Or mm -hmm. yeah, if, Mr. Chairman, before you do that, if, if I may, I would like just to give the uh, citizens of Millville also, uh, we did have a public information event about the closing and the vacating of the town hall on the 18th of July and uh, one of the things that we talked about was working with our insurer uh, for um, the town to see about um, addressing the need through the vacate order which was we have to actually hire a structural engineer um, and we are working with our insurance company to do that. 
uh, one of the reasons Mr. Zona is here this evening is because uh, we have done some analysis of uh, firms and we recognize that yours is a national firm um, and specializes in several areas. If you could tell us a little bit about your company that you work for, um, also um, your expertise, uh, you told us, but I think it's important that the public hear that um, and don't be so shy about it, Mr. Zona, because we know you've got a, a lot of expertise in the area, so we appreciate if you could tell us that. Sure. Um, well, starting with the firm. Uh, the firm was started in 1956 by three MIT professors. Um, their focus is structural engineering and building envelope consulting. Um, so that means the walls and the roofs and their long-term performance, and of course the structure is, is holding it up. Um, I've been with the firm for 40 years. When I started, we were in a house in Cambridge with 40 people, and one person had just flown to California to open a field office. Today we're over 500 people with offices in Waltham, which is now the, um, still the home office, but, but where we're now located. We have about 250 people in that office. We're also in New York City, Washington, D.C., Chicago, Houston, San Francisco, and Los Angeles and Orange County. Um, so we've really become a national firm, and we've really grown. It sounds like a dramatic number, but it's, it's slow, steady growth. It's about an average of a 6 to 7% growth a year, and it's been pretty steady through the life of the firm. Right now, about 60% of our business is structural engineering and structural mechanics, and I'm the national head of that practice. Um, my personal background, I have a, a bachelor's degree in civil engineering from Tufts University and a master's in structural engineering from MIT, and then later I got a master's in business administration from Northeastern University. Uh, our company's practice, as I mentioned, is structural engineering and building envelope consulting, um, but it's split across both of those disciplines, roughly one-third in new construction, consulting with architects and owners and developers, creating new things, um, one-third in repair and rehabilitation of damaged or deteriorating structures, and one-third in investigative work um, this probably starts out as investigative work that could clearly move to repair and rehabilitation. So that's the thumbnail. Okay. Thank you. John, do you have? Yeah, I'd like to know what your next steps are going to be. Since you were there today, you said you couldn't get to the roof line. Take a look uh, to evaluate what you see. I know you didn't take any field measurements up on the roof, the rafters. No pitches. When do you foresee yourself moving forward, and what steps would you be taking to make a valued opinion of what state that building is in? So I think the first step in any assignment is to agree on a scope of work. Um, my suggestion for a scope of work would be, and, and I've mentioned this al already to those I met with, it, this is an older building, and there may be many questions about the building. But I think it's, it's probably wise at this point to focus on that section of roof which has been identified as being at risk and is the reason the building's currently closed to the public. Um, so have a limited scope to start with. And start with um, field work. Well, first, I understand there have been prior reports. I was just handed one just before the meeting. I didn't really have a chance to see that before I went. I've already learned a couple of new things by looking at it while we were waiting. Um, so look at all the photographs and written work that have been done by others. Um, and then set up a field investigation that would involve measurements. I want to know how much those walls have moved out. Um, We've already seen evidence that it didn't all move at once, that there's been some movement that was accommodated by prior renovations. So but the total amount that it's moved is enough that the trusses are undermined. So knowing how much it's moved, it certainly establishes a baseline. Um, and to get into that attic to, to measure and diagnose what the framing scheme is, and I believe a, a modest amount of structural analysis work will probably tell us where the forces are coming from that are pushing the walls outward. But once we get up there and see it, it's most likely going to be pretty evident what, what that is. Um, 
fact that you're working through your insurance company um, probably complicates things a little bit. There probably has to be an agreement as to scope and fee. But I think ultimately you need to know not just what's wrong but how to fix it. And we would propose to develop a scheme, um, certainly to the point where you can get budget pricing for um, the repairs. And ultimately, if asked, we would do detailed drawings and um, prepare a final design so you could move ahead with that repair. My next question is, do you also get an analysis of what the foundation and, and where it's structural? Because as you know, um, foundations do start decreasing and strength and I'm wondering where our foundation has it been moving because of everything else shifting weight load stuff like that will that be something that you guys will be looking at I would say not initially because I would suggest we stay with a focused what's damaged from you know up in that attic space and in that 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 um, large classroom up there um, find out what it would take to stabilize that, return that to a stable condition. So everything else being equal, your building is back to where it was. And, and, and enhance so enough so that that damage won't recur. Um, then I think we could discuss with you, if you want, a more comprehensive study of the condition of the building, which would include many things, not just foundations, but I will caution with a 160-year-old building, um, there's a lot of things that are going to be concealed. Um, my walkthrough today, I didn't see other things that were startling to me that would say, boy, you've got a real issue. What you've got is a 160-year-old building that has floors that are a little uneven, some cracks in a, in a few places where things were joined together imperfectly in the past, uh, aging and weathering of, of the brick and the mortar on the outside. Um, if you wanted to take the next step to do that type of evaluation, my firm does that work. But I think it's separate from this initial mm -hmm. assignment. It's within our capability. Um, Mr. Chairman, if I may, uh, one of the things I think uh, I wanted to reiterate is that uh, with this, we have stated over and over that this goes back to 2015, the initial um, uh, work with the insurance company. And the insurance company recognizes that we are still having um, this issue and has allowed the town to select the firm. So tonight we're actually looking at someone we're selecting not having the insurance company select the engineering firm so that we can get um, what we hope to be a very impartial and um, substantive uh, assessment of the building so that we're not continuing to have um, this problem going forward and to find out what's the true scope that's going to be done so tonight it is um, really was more of an introduction uh, for you uh, for our board to ask some questions that they could get some more understanding with the hope that we could select uh, a firm and move forward and, and inform the insurance company this is uh, who we may have selected so one thing I didn't mention, which is essential, I am a registered professional engineer in the state of Massachusetts. Okay. And don't hire someone who isn't for an assignment like this. <laughs> okay, that's good. So what is the, I know you're saying, so uh, scope and sequence, uh, field investigation, develop scheme, um, the insurance company might delay this because of payment and approval and things of that sort. Sure. Approximately, and I won't hold you to it. What is the um, what is your turnaround or your timeline typically on something like this? Um, and I know things happen. It, it really <laughs> depends on when we start. <laughs> okay. Um, but I would think that within you know the initial come out, look at it, um, understand what's what's happening, and be able to describe that to you mm -hmm. um, in an informal way. Um, you know, less than a month. Okay. All right. That's under normal circumstances. Normal. I get. I get it. <laughs> Jennifer, can I ask you sure. a question? Uh, um, yeah, sure. Paul Wood on the on the finance committee. Yes, um, my question to you is. Have there been circumstances in your professional career where you go into a building such as this and your advice 
comes down to no, it's not worth fixing. Um, I'm going to turn that around a little bit. Okay. Um, I like to say that given enough time and enough money, we can do anything. I think whether or not you fix it comes down to what value you place on the building and what future use you see for it. If this were you know, an important historic building to the town that was at the core of the fabric of the community, um, and there were it was a commitment and the financial resources to, to restore it, I, in looking at it, walking through, I see no reason why you wouldn't do that. That said, um, it may involve a lot of money before beyond just the repair of the roof if you're really trying to restore the building and, and so you do have it last a long time. It's our responsibility to do the cost benefit analysis to determine if it's if it's worth putting X amount of dollars into that or if it's more worth looking at other options. We can participate in that, but I understand you already had yeah, the beginning of a study at least along those lines. So others probably have already started down that road. Um, I think the fundamental question, and again, I, I'm going to suggest we for initially focus on one thing, and that is make the building safe so people can get back in it by fixing the one thing you know is wrong. And that gives you, that buys you time then to do the type of evaluation that you're suggesting. And will you be personally up in the attic? I may or may not be. It depends a but bit on schedule. I will be personally, personally involved. Um, okay. Our projects are, are all run by principals of the firm. I'm the senior principal of the okay. firm. Um, I'm personally involved with every project that I'm the principal in charge of. And, um, if I involve others, it will be because they have the same or better expertise. I'm good. And they will yeah. also be licensed professional engineers in Massachusetts. So the question is uh, payment. <laughs> no, it's selection. That's selection. what this question is. Tonight. The insurance will be, right? Right. It's right. Next, uh, Mr. Working Chairman, again, uh, tonight we're making a decision. So your board would need to vote to select um, this firm so that I can then notify um, the insurance company that this is the firm. And then we can set up um, negotiations with the insurance company to then proceed um, with defining the scope of what has happened and uh, to get an actual report back uh, from the firm to the board so that we could proceed. Okay. Put a little background on that too. Um, my name is Rich Corvello. So I'm the chairman of the Town Hall Relocation Committee, <laughs> along with Mr. <laughs> Finn uh, okay. back there. We were involved in, in the initial study, so yes. if there's something you need from that, mm -hmm. um, be glad to help in any way possible on it. Um, their, their brochure is uh, is incredible, mm -hmm. a lot of uh, stuff here, yeah. but the name looked familiar, and um, I started looking back, and your firm did do some work uh, for when I was involved in my previous life with the National Guard. You did a project, uh, I don't know, almost four years ago, where you looked at um, something similar to this. You looked at um, a truss beam that was in an armory building. Mm -hmm. And there was a snow load on top of the building, and, it, and the trusts where they had decayed over the years were failing. And the firm did come up with a fix to repair those trusses. And I called around today after I realized to some of the people that worked on it, and they uh, they had a lot of praise for this for this firm. The contract was through DCAM. Yes, but it was for the National Guard, and it's in the back here. I think Greg Cohen was probably the yeah. partner in charge of that mm -hmm. project. But um, they did come up with a with a fix for something that everybody thought that the buildings were going to have to be abandoned. And there were several of them across the state, 10 or 12 of them, with the same design and they were able to come through and fix it. So hopefully you can do the same here. Well, we, we do look at a lot of problems. We have over the, the last five years now looked at a lot of buildings with damage from weight of ice and snow. Mm -hmm. We had two sort of historic winters um, and I've actually given talks to structural engineering groups around the country um, about the lessons learned from that. And in 2015 alone, we probably looked at 200 buildings, either for owners 
for the state or for insurance companies. So we are one of the go-to firms for insurance companies to answer the very narrow mm -hmm. questions that they need answers mm -hmm. to determine coverage. So we've already had some discussions. I think the, the report that was previously done here for the insurance company um, maybe stopped short of being completely conclusive. Um, but did point to some pre-existing conditions there and that they were documented before the winter of 2015, and I expect those will be questions that even when we are done, the insurance company will discuss with you about what coverage is available and what they will and won't pay for. Any other question? No. I would entertain a motion, a motion to engage uh, Mr. Zona and his company in doing uh, a structural analysis. I'll second that motion. Aye. You Question? You move it. Oh, I'm so moved. I'll second it. <laughs> Roll. Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Thank you. Thank, thank, well, you. thank you for inviting me to be here. I look forward to working with you. Come back with I the think we already started, frankly. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. We'll be in touch. Thank okay. you. Thank you for your time. <laughs> Next on the agenda is, uh, it's right on time, Steve, 745, approximately. <laughs> um, it's BMR School District, and this has to do with the uh, recertified uh, uh, budget and uh, I would, uh, at, at this point, uh, I think it's settled uh, in that uh, all we're doing is to uh, vote to uh, support the uh, recertified budget as of June 18th by the school committee. Uh, uh, basically, uh, on the afternoon of the 18th of June, we met the, the superintendent of schools and the assistant superintendent, and uh, we came to terms in agreeing that uh, our uh, supplemental contribution would be increased by $40,000. The school committee uh, voted that. So I would uh, entertain a motion to uh, uh, support the, uh, the budget as recertified. So moved. Is that your motion? That's my motion. Second. Roll. Aye. 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 The vote is unanimous. Okay. Selectman's uh, forum, anyone have anything to say? It's not on the agenda, but. Uh... Mr. Chairman, I'm not one of the selectmen, but I do want to, as town administrator, um, make note of um, several things. One is um, we know that it's been a very difficult time uh, for the community, and I deeply am appreciative um, of the patience uh, that the town has exhibited, um, as well as the cooperativeness, I think, that we're receiving uh, from other boards and recognizing that we're without our town hall. Um, we have had a, a tremendous amount of uh, change uh, and uh, inconvenience to encounter to do daily operations. Uh, but I do want to say that we could not do that if we didn't have, um, I think, some leadership in this community. Uh, and first and foremost, I think some of that um, is indicative of both this board and um, other boards in the community that we were up against um, some very pressing di deadlines, including having to deal with um, the assessment for the school. And, uh, and I recognize that it's not easy to work um, without a building. Uh, and um, having said that, I think we have entered into, um, I think, an era of understanding that there will be times uh, where things uh, may be a little bit rocky until we get a real ruling on what happens with this building. But um, in all, it's the uh, warmth and support of the community that has really been evident, and the town hall employees as well. And I say this now because we did not have cable abilities um, during 
um, our press and information event about the town hall, but it's um, important to note that the community can still do town business. We have people every day paying their taxes, getting birth certificates, getting marriage certificates, coming to me to ask for assistance, getting on an agenda. Um, and we're doing all of that, um, not with the convenience of a building um, that we'd like to be in, uh, but also through the gracious hospitality of our uh, police chiefs and those people who work uh, in our pub public safety division who recognize that our safety was important in that building. And um, having said that, we're open for business um, on the regular business hours. The community can um, get in touch with us uh, by telephone and or by visiting the police station uh, during our normal uh, business office hours or afterwards um, by telephone. So we're still working very, very hard. Um, we're going to work as expediently as possible. Um, I do want to say that I believe that this board um, is really vested in wanting to do what's best for the community and uh, is going to work very um, cooperatively, I think, uh, in making sure that this building is assessed um, and we can uh, eventually have a ruling on whether we can actually go back in that building um, in hopefully in the near future. So I just want to say that I want to thank the public uh, for being understanding uh, during a difficult situation. Thank our cable guys for uh, being able to help film this today and we will keep you apprised of updates. Um, and I know that uh, your chairman here has spent an awful lot of energy and time, uh, many, many hours as well in trying to keep um, the town business floating. And you know, when you're up against a, you know, a rock in a hard place, it's really important that the community remember that. Um, you may be a small community, we are a small community, but we're mighty in <laughs> spirit. So I thank the Finance Committee for coming together to help negotiate a deal uh, with the, the school board. I know the school board um, has worked uh, closely with us in trying to come up with a solution. Um, and at the end of the day, I think we are all work closely uh, for the community. So I just want to say that. I think it's really important. Um, I don't think there are many communities across the Commonwealth who one day have a town hall and the next day they don't. So it is not normal. It's not a routine thing, um, but it is something we're going to get through. And we're going to get through it and on the other side to make sure that we have a safe building and the people in it can work safely. And I just want to say that. Um, so I thank you, thank you. Mr. Thank Chairman. Thank you for all your efforts. Uh, I know you worked all weekend um, trying to keep town government uh, money. Uh, moving things, going to Walmart, getting <laughs> accessories and things like that. Our IT is totally almost, uh, at, I'd say about 95%. So I think that's really good. Um, so that wasn't easy to do uh, and not uh, conflict with our um, public safety operations. So, so that part of it is really good too. Okay. Uh, we have uh, warrants to sign. Uh, yes, just the payroll. Just the payroll, mm -hmm. okay. We can do that after we adjourn. Yep. One last uh, comment uh, on step two of Mr. Zona's recommendation. I would like to convene at some time a workshop with the Board of Selectmen and the Finance Committee to uh, work on the scope of the work that needs to be done going forward, or at least a tentative plan to go forward. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, you can take that. Didn't we have um, like six o'clock before each selectman meeting for a workshop? Do we still have that? You can. You can do that. Okay. Our next meeting would be on the 11th. Okay. I mean, no, sorry, first, first, first of August. Right. So with that, I, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Roll. Aye. 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 Aye.